press it a little bit harder. Um, and it's about becoming data driven. And Andrew, just to your point as well, um, that's so what question. It's about, it's about using metrics in context with a specific question you're trying to answer. Um, and, and during the course of this presentation, what we'll be doing is, is explaining how some of our customers have used just a, just a collection of the metrics that we're able to gather in order to deliver true business value. And that's when we'll go through some of the different points on the demonstration as well. Um, the, the idea of this session would be firstly a few slides from me, which will be um, just essentially setting the scene and providing some context um, before we get through to the demonstration. <clears throat> so we'll start off on the first slide and the quote. And this is, this is really highlighting, highlighting the importance now of, of software delivery functions within, within the wider business community. Never before has, has a business relied so heavily on the success of their software delivery function, which means engineering leaders like yourselves need to be supported in order to make the right decisions. And that's, and that's an interesting point, and to, to some of the points as well that, that Andrew raised earlier on, um, it's, it's very interesting because the data is available. It's very, very difficult to get. And it's very challenging to try and find the right type of information, which particularly in, in software delivery, given the age that we're living in of, of big data and analytics, you have different departments within the organization which have analytics across marketing, across sales, across finance, and every single other part. They're supported, supported in their decision-making with, with objective data. Um, even, even throughout operations, some of the parts and the, the metrics that Andrew's mentioning through operations supported with a, with a wide range of different tools. If we move on to the actual creation of the software and delivery, there's this very little information to be able to pull any, any reasonable type of metrics up in order to support engineering leaders' decision making. But this is, this is where Plan Deck assists with. It provides information in that part for teams, processes and delivery. And typically, um, the challenges that we're hearing from different companies and customers that we're talking to are, are laid out here. And it's, it's about asking specific questions. And, and this is how um, you know, we work with and we believe customers should work when they're trying to define metrics is what questions are you trying to answer and what type of challenges you're hearing. Generally, we'd use this point to kind of start a conversation with some of the people we're talking to. But be really good to get your feedback maybe at the end to see if any of these are ones that, that you're trying to understand a bit more of and also if there are any others that, that are ones that are particularly interesting that you want to try and answer. Just to introduce the platform and, and uh, essentially where it, where it fits and the value it can provide. This is essentially just a single page explaining that from on the left hand side idea, design, and plan all the way through down to integrate and deploy, uh, you have the software delivery life cycle. Within that, engineering leaders that are trying to improve and um, increase velocity, improve delivery times, predictability, or quality need to get a certain level of, of metrics and, and quantitative analysis to be able to understand how to improve and where to improve, where to put resources, because there's a lot of different bits of technology out there to try and get lots of information from. And it's becoming ever more complicated the more uh, broader this software delivery life cycle becomes. So we find typically that customers look at um, point solutions, for example, through geo reporting. Um, also, if we're looking at specific reporting through code metrics platforms, again, providing a, um, a single view with a single data point. Um, and in some cases, you're looking at Excel spreadsheets to be able to either bring this all together or solely report on. Um, all of this is providing just a, a, a single point and a data point, but also it becomes quite challenging to give that complete end-to-end -end view. Uh, companies then that want to take it one step further do look at business intelligence tools like Power BI, Tableau, and Click. These, you know, it's possible to get the information out, but it is challenging. It has its gaps. First of all, the data has to come out. So the ETL challenge is, is quite significant. Um, and once the data is out, it's got to be stored somewhere. So it can be costly as well. 
let alone trying to make sense of all the different types of data that you're getting from all these different tools. But this is where Plan Deck comes in. So Plan Deck is able to provide an out-of-the-box solution which has um, a library of about 85 to 90 different metrics, which when used in context with what, with what you're trying to achieve can really move the needle in terms of business value they provide. And we'll be going through that in a bit later on in the presentation. We also integrate with time tracking tools if they're used. I know some companies are really against them and some people do use them, so that's it's an option. As well as integration uh, with Slack and Teams as an event-based polling system after any particular event, um, end of a sprint, um, when, when a piece of code has been committed, there'll be an automated poll that comes out to the developers to understand how engaged and motivated they are with a series of pre-canned questions. And this is all, this is all held together. It's, it's a fully hierarchical breakdown. So programs, projects, teams, and individuals, you'll be able to go quite granular down into the level of detail you need to get to. It's, it provides that full level of um, time series of events leading up to a certain point. So you're able to view the history of, of a particular ticket um, all the way from when it was designed to when it was deployed. And you can see how that played out over the course of time. Um, obviously looking at trends and analysis um, right the way from when the data began in whichever tools we're gonna to be integrating with. And just, just on, a, on a point as well, the, the above isn't a, um, uh, isn't, do we integrate with more tools up the top? It's not a definitive list. We have um, Jira, Azure DevOps, as well as um, any Git repository code quality test tool, or any CI CD tool, um, we're able to pull data from. So what I wanted to spend um, just one more slide on was just explaining briefly about um, how it all fits together. I think what I'll do, I'll just build out the slides. It's going to be easier if we get all this on one page. Um, very simply, we have the various data sources within the development platforms that you use. That's then gathered by the Plan Deck Gatherer, um, which can be on-premise or in our, um, in, hosted in our SaaS platform. Uh, this is where we, we use and we run multiple APIs which connect through to the data sources, which are managed by ourselves. So the idea here is to provide you with an analytics platform which doesn't take time either to, to build, to put in place. This is all managed through by ourselves and, and can be deployed within weeks. So, so I'm working with an organization at the moment where we're rolling out to about two to 300 engineers. And we have, we have an initial go live date of about three weeks from now. So it can be deployed very, very quickly with a full library of metrics. Um, the data processor at the top, that's going to be SAS, but that's essentially aggregating all the data from, from different instances, from different accounts, and performs metrics calculations. One thing to point out as well is the platform itself is, is process agnostic. Um, so, so one of the companies we work with have um, a number of different teams doing lots of different things and running Jira or ADO in, in a number of different ways. And our tool is able to adapt to whichever process they have. So you get a single aggregated view of company performance uh, without having to change the processes that your teams have. Because it's always good to have empowered teams. Um, we're able to um, um, aggregate that reporting as well. And then, then essentially user permissions, um, whoever wants to use it, um, whoever you want to use it will be able to use it. So you can set permissions to admin, viewers, dashboards and such forth. And then the UI is where we have, it's the library of metrics that we have fully customizable. So you select the metrics you need working with our customer success team. Um, they will then identify the important metrics that we, we then build the, um, and recommend for you to build the custom dashboards. That's something that you can build on the fly very, very easily. Um, and entirely out of the box as well. So, so no configuration once it's all set up. Um, so, what we're going to be doing now is just run through some real life examples of um, firstly the uh, dashboard itself. So just to give you an idea as to what the platform looks like, this is essentially a screenshot showing just a summary page of the different metrics that we have. This is entirely customizable as well. So 
you can put here whatever important metrics are going to be relevant to you and your business. Um, and we'll, see, we'll I'll run through this in more detail when we go through onto the demonstration a little bit later. But let's look at some, some real world examples of, of how our customers have used our platform um, and some of the metrics to achieve uh, real business value. And one of the um, metrics and companies that we work with, a uh, European travel company, it was all about reducing time to value. So they're a growing business with, with added pressures about the time it's taking to deliver software. And, and all the stakeholders, given their recent investment, wanted to make sure that there was, there, was a, there was a quicker time to value from when requests came into the development team. And so what they realized was that there were specific bottlenecks in the delivery process. And there were delays that certain metrics were able to highlight for them to be able to take the correct action, which ultimately resulted in a reduction of about 50%. Um, cycle time and lead times were reduced by over a 26 week period. And when we go through onto the demonstration, I'll explain to you the type of metrics they looked at um, and how they then were able to, to take that view as to, as, to, as to improving outcomes of their business. Um, and this is focusing on cycle time, lead time to value, sprint reports and flow efficiency, which obviously to, to Andrew's slides earlier was some of the key metrics that you're going to be tracking or that HG recommend to track as a part of the development process. The second one to talk about would be um, essentially about productivity. This is an interesting example of, of one of our customers who um, had, um, a, again, a significant amount of investment within the software delivery teams, and they hired a lot of new developers expecting them to provide a certain level of productivity when they arrived. Um, so the new team was bedding in, but they realized that productivity was actually decreasing. Um, and they, they weren't quite sure why that was. Um, and, and what they actually found was that it was all to do with the experience of the engineers working at different points within the software delivery lifecycle, identifying that there were some inexperienced engineers generating nearly half of all the returns from QA. And this was focused on some key metrics that identified which returns and who was working on them um, in order for them to take the action they needed to to improve. And ultimately, this ended up saving them over, or over 600 business days of rework. Um, and there's a metric that we have that's able to track and measure that, which we'll go through when we go into the presentation, into the demonstration, which we will go through to now. So excuse me, guys, we just quickly change laptops and we share screens. Okay, perfect. And that is now up and running. Okay, so just, just to briefly introduce the, the user interface here. Um, here is that summary slide, which I, I took a screenshot of and essentially provides you with a snapshot of whatever you want to see uh, when you first log into the platform. On the right hand side here, we have the date range that you want to select, whether that be 4, 12, 26 or a year. It's custom as well, so you can select the date range you need, plus how you want your time series charts to look as well, whether they're going to be weekly or daily. On the left hand side here is, is essentially our um, navigation pane. And this is, this is entirely customizable based on the processes that you have. Um, in, for, the, for the purposes of demonstration, we've essentially aligned programs, projects, teams, and individuals. And generally when we're doing demonstrations, this is essentially a collection of all of our metrics, which have essentially been put into kind of these three categories. Um, we have lots of different metrics, so it's always quite, um, uh, it's always a little bit much to go through everyone in, in, all at once. And it's all about making it as um, relevant as possible to the, to the customers that we're talking to. So, so what I'll do in a moment uh, is, is focus on the case studies that, that we spoke about and run through some of the metrics that they used in order to achieve the outcomes they did. Before I do, I'll just quickly focus and, and run through and some of the features on the UI that, that was probably worthwhile calling out. And then we'll go through onto the other parts in a little bit. So the first one here, we have um, 
I suppose you have a concept of best practice, which is essentially hygiene. Is, is the tool that you're using, is Jura or ADO being used in the way that it was supposed to? Is everything adhering to a particular, people adhering to a particular process? Um, on all of these tiles here, we have a full knowledge base. So we click on the information part here and it explains how the particular metric is calculated, why it's important. And then of course, if there's any more information you need, you can come through to our support team or our customer success team. Every single metric that you have is, is clickable and you're able to get more detail as you're, as you're going through. Um, and then obviously broken down by project and we can go into it even further going through to teams and then individuals as well. Um, and, and just a little bit on this, this essentially measures the transitions through stages. So if someone's going from pre-development all the way through to QA, it will, it will count as a, a speeding through stage ticket and then count towards this percentage. So, so that's the basic introduction to the UI and some of the, some of the metrics. As I said, we've got you know, over 85 different metrics. So rather than go through all these individually, we've built a um, custom dashboard to kind of cover off some of these different case studies that we spoke about. And, and this, is, this is how our product is consumed by a lot of our customers. It's not about looking at as many different metrics as possible. It's about, um, it's a, it's about making sure that you're using the right metrics in the right way. Now, the first one we were talking about is about reducing time to value, and it's about understanding uh, the different stages required in order to, to make improvements, and that can be done in, in a number of ways. In the case of the customer we spoke about for case study one, this was about looking at two key features here, two key, two key um, metrics as well as lead time to value, but also looking at uh, detailed sprint reports as well to understand what work's been added, mid-sprint, where can you improve as you're going through the sprints as well. So this first metric here is about lead time to value. And this measures true lead time to value, essentially, by taking open in your ticketing tool, ADO or Jira, to deployed in your deployment tool, Jenkins, CD, um, Go CD, CD City, anything that you have. Um, it will take that end-to-end -end view. So what you're able to here have is, is firstly visibility on the average, true lead time to value. If the business comes in and says, okay, well, how long is something going to take me to create? You can say on average it's going to be around about 20 days, give or take, 10 to 15%. But what this also enables you to do is to able spot, spot some outliers as they're happening to investigate more. So if you want to improve, you need to look at the lead times that go above the average with, you know, go above the average plus... 15 to 20% and look and understand why that was. And you're able to look at these outliers and if this was connected to Jira, you'll be able to click through and investigate that ticket further. So this is the first metric that you'd use to be able to use that investigation. The second one here would be, would be feature cycle time, which if I click through is about, as you know, um, understanding the time it takes in the development cycle from in progress through to QA. Um, and then taking out that higher view, you're able to get kind of in a, in a, on a developer perspective to understand how they're performing, see if there's any ways that they can improve. And this is exactly what, what happened in the case of our customer. They were looking at certain cycle times. And again, if we look at the cycle times here, you're able to spot some outliers and be able to take corrective action if any of them are over. You've got that long-term trend and an average here as well. Um, and, you know, able to kind of go in and interrogate some of these in a little bit more detail to understand why this one took 45 business days and then able to make the correct decisions in order to improve moving forward um, and setting the goals to improve this to whatever the business needs in order to feel that they're getting um, an improved time to market. The last metric here to talk about on this particular dashboard is flow efficiency. Which is, which is a particularly insightful metric which a lot of our customers use. Um, and I, in fact, our own development team uses this as well. And essentially, it measures the, the, the efficiency of your process flow. So it measures the difference between active and waiting time. So this percentage here is, is the amount of active time spent working on individual um, tickets. 
And so what this means is, and in the case of our customer, they are able to look at the particular you know, waiting times, which are in gray here, and think, okay, well, there's a, there's a lot of waiting time here in to-do. Well, maybe if we improve and we change um, the resource makeup of, of our guys that are looking at active and developing, we may be able to reduce that and therefore reduce our waiting time and, and have a really big impact on their time to market. And it's all about using these, using these together and in context to be able to get to the outcome that's required. The other report that they focused on, and this, this again um, is widely used by our customers and of course mentioned in, in Andrew's points earlier on about particular metrics relating to individual sprints. And what we'll do if we go to 81, which I think is a good amount of data, um, is, is the ability to be able to have a, have a good overview of um, the sprint report during and obviously after as well to understand if people are achieving their commitments, if not, well, what happened and, and how, can we, how can we take action to improve that? And the first two, you have um, kind of daily velocity throughout the sprint as well as the sprint scope completed, but also measuring the target itself, which was set at the start, how much has this been de-scoped or reworked, but also the work added during the scope as well. So you're able to look at the amount of work added and interrogate Jira to go into things in a little bit more detail to understand what was added and, and why was it added. Absolutely, absolutely. Can't translate though. Um, and this is a particularly interesting metric because it's able to give you a very good bird's eye view as to how, how each individual sprint is performing. And if you want to try and improve the quality and the velocity of your sprints, you're looking at um, trying to limit the distractions of, of individuals within, within the process. And that's exactly what this will be able to tell you. There's some high level metrics here on, on the sprint scope, what was reopened and estimated during the sprint. And some of the other metrics that this brings forward, um, time spent on features versus bugs. This is a, you know, some companies look at this in different ways. It's essentially being able to split the, to the type of work that you do. Some companies look at this as um, roadmap contribution versus, versus BAU. Um, it, but it's about being able to segregate effort for ones that are actually providing um, value based on a roadmap or ones that are doing stuff that, that kind of fix things as they come in. And you're able to get a good view on that here as well. Um, again, overview on quality, return rate, reworks, and best practices have we gone through. But just to highlight some of, the, some of the other key metrics here, being able to compare the total completed versus the committed story points on a sprint by sprint basis. So you can have a look at that achievement over time. But also during the sprint itself, um, our customer looked at the progress of the sprint timeline on a day-by-day -day basis to say, so they can dynamically change the resource makeup in order to look at ways in which they can improve outcomes at the end of every sprint. So for example, you're looking here and there's maybe a lot in dev cycle hold at the start. So you can think, well, okay, well, why is that? Let's interrogate that a little bit more. And maybe we need to change the makeup in this sprint to deal with that. Um, to produce that backlog as we're going through. So, so it's a way of being able to dynamically change the makeup of, um, of the work and the resources that you're using during the sprint in order to achieve the best outcomes. And it was this report coupled with the others that this um, um, European travel company used in order to improve time to market. And what we'll do now is just go back to the custom dashboard to run through that second case study, which was, which was around the um, North America e-commerce company who had just hired a lot of new developers, um, expecting a certain output from them that didn't quite materialize. And so, so we, were, we were working with them to try and understand where the bottlenecks were. And I think what we came to was that there was some, there was three key metrics they needed to focus on because it was all about the amount of returns that they were having. Lots of, lots of the engineers are working on tickets that hadn't passed QA first time. 
So they focused on, on three key metrics here, which were first time pass rate, return rate, return rate, and rework. Now, quite simply, first time pass rate, if we click through measures, the success of each individual ticket, when it goes through whichever gated process you might have, your go, no, go area, whether that be UAT, um, QA, whichever barrier you, you kind of put in, we'll set the metric to be able to measure that. And this measures how, what percentage of tickets pass that first time. That's it's straightforward. Return rate measures the percentage of tickets that get returned. Um, these don't add up to 100% because return rate can be captured and measured more than once. So there's going to be reoffending tickets that come back. Um, and this is then able to measure that. And what they were able to do is to kind of drill down into a little bit more detail to understand where the problems were. And if they were to then look at the source data to understand if there were particular tickets that were causing them issues, they were then able to go into those into more detail to be able to take the action that they needed to. If we go on to people quickly and go through to the same rate, what we're able to do for return rate is, this is actually a relatively good example because what you're noticing here is there's maybe one or two people that account for a large portion of the returns. So we have return rate here for Callum was a lot higher than, than his colleagues. So, so maybe Callum's new, maybe Callum is dealing with tickets that, that he hasn't had training to be able to deal with um, efficiently. And it's a very good way of being able to identify those opportunities to, to help improve your team and your developers. Um, and obviously improve outcomes as well, because a lower return rate means that you know, you're not spending time on rework. And it's all about uh, value contribution as opposed to dealing with things that, that haven't quite worked out the first time. And this is where this metric really helps out, which is rework. And rework measures the amount of active time spent within the um, ticketing tool uh, working on returned tickets. So, and this then calculates that on a, on a daily basis and comes up with a number. Now, the company we were talking to had a, had a pretty, pretty high number here. It was about, um, I, think it was, I think it was over, over a thousand. And we were able to reduce that just by focusing on maybe 10% um, of their uh, developers in order to improve a maybe the work they were getting that was best suited their capabilities, but also to um, to improve the way in which they're working, to have obviously the outcome that we get here, which is for them um, a pretty significant reduction of 620 days by being able to focus on these particular metrics. Um, so from from the purpose of the demonstration, that's that's what I wanted to show you. Hopefully, that's kind of um, provided you with, with, a, with a good idea as to what we're able to do. There are a, a lot of different metrics which can mean lots of different things to, um, you know, in different situations. So we would ask that, you know, if you have any questions, feel free just to put them through on the chat. I'll be happy to answer them at the end of my presentation. Um, but what I'll do now is just, is just quickly go back to the slides. Um, I've just got to stop sharing. And, and, just, um, and just focus through on, um, you know, just, just some key takeaways, just to kind of, um, you know, if you're going to take a few things away from this, it's about, it's about using Plan Deck in context with, with what outcome you want to achieve, whether it's delivering earlier, um, delivering of a higher quality, more predictably and more frequently. And being able to, to work with us, we can, we can obviously have a customer success team that are able to work with you to understand what metrics best fit your organization. Um, and obviously entirely customizable, which means, you know, bringing forward the meaningful metrics in context of what you want to deliver. Um, seamlessly integrates with any tools that you have with no effort your side for integration. That's something that we take care of ourselves and can be deployed very, very quickly. And um, 
just obviously to, to Andrew's point at the start, um, we're, we're obviously working in partnership with, with HG. Um, and, and what that means obviously brings benefits to, to all of the companies that, that HG work with, which come with a step of pre-agreed commercials, which provide a, a significant discount over and above what we normally provide. Um, and also um, the ability to have a free four-week POC to be able to understand you know, what the metrics look like with your data, um, if it's something that, that you're interested in, in moving forward with and, and looking at in a little bit more detail. Um, so look, it's been a pleasure to, to present to all you guys and thank you, Andrew and the team at HG for, uh, for inviting us on. Uh, feel free to get in touch with me or Andrew or follow up with any of the HG guys if you have any questions. If you do, then, then feel free to put through on chat or indeed we can follow up after the session. Um, any questions, I presume, if anyone has any, we're happy to answer. Yeah, sure. Andrew? On, on, either, on either side. Hi, if anyone's got a question, just um, unmute your microphone or do you write in the group chat? No. Okay. Nope, don't think anyone's got any. No, absolutely fine. Good morning, guys. Oh, sorry, one second. Uh, someone from Commerfly, I'm not sure, sorry, I can't see your name. Does it work with multiple of Jira Cloud? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, so multiple instances of accounts, cloud, on-premise, it's, it's able to consolidate um, all of those. Um, across multiple teams working different processes so so yes it does and then uh, sorry if i get the pronunciation wrong here uh min douglas utrack and team city um I'd, I'd have to get back to on utrack but but team city definitely yeah we we can integrate with team city as, as a cicd tool um utrack i'll i'll get back to you One of the things when we had a look at it um, that impressed us and Stuart Pierce in particular was uh, it's very quick and easy to get set up. So there's, you know, a number of dashboards that come pretty much out of the box. Uh, the integration is straightforward. So yes, absolutely. It's, it's not an intimidating tool to use. Absolutely. Um, so we have a couple more questions. Yeah. So sorry, just, just, sorry, Jess. Yeah. Your, your microphone is awful. It's really creating a load of noise and uh, it was fine with Andrew talking but yours is um not not good for some reason oh sorry um there is one is that better uh it, it, it i don't know it, it's sort of doing a weird noise so i don't know if you can use a different one okay well maybe i can read the question yeah um any generic API for custom integrations? Yes, so um, it depends what they are. Um, so the API access we're able to grant, we're currently, currently working with some of our larger customers to be able to do that. I think at the moment we're, we're maintaining um, control of, of the kind of generic integrations and APIs. But if there's something you, you specifically want to integrate with, then we can, we can talk in more detail and uh, work out the best way to do that. Uh, but it's you know, definitely our view to make, to make that integration piece as flexible as possible. It's definitely a way that we'd like to, we'd like to take the platform. I guess maybe to that point, is there something specific that you'd like to integrate with? Who's that? Awesome that was question? Ingvar's question. Ingvar. We've unmuted you, Ingvar, so you can talk if you want to. If you want to. Ah, uh, thank you. I was typing. Uh, no, well, uh... Uh, we have the question here. Um, custom integration is not really for thinking of us. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, that's thank fine. you for that. But yes, it's. Um, 
Um, it, it is something we can do. So if, there, if there's specific integrations that anyone has, we'll have a conversation and work out the best way to do. Um, as I said, we are looking to give API access to, to some of our enterprise customers. Um, and I guess that's something we could do. Data out in terms of aggregating up for MI. So data out, presuming kind of integrations into business intelligence tools. So um, that is something we're able to do. You're able to extract our data layer. Um, so you'll have a choice. You can either use you can either use our UI. Um, we're just getting a bit of feedback in here, guys. So I hope it hope the audio is okay for where you are. No, um, it, someone's got the mic on. It's feeding back. Okay. Is that better? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Um, data out. That's right. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so, so yeah, data out. So if it's if it's data out to um, business intelligence tools, then yeah, you can use our you can use our um, um, data layer as well, or our UI. It depends. It's up to you. Um, and you're able, obviously, I presume, perhaps for to, to present upwards as well. You can you can obviously do extractions as well to um, PowerPoint or, or anything like that as well. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Implementation times and process. So. So obviously that, that's going to vary depending on depending on the profile of, of, of each individual implementation. It, it is generally um, quick when you're looking at it in in context of, of other BI projects. Um, so we are. I'm working with a um, customer now who are onboarding. Um, that we've set a go live date of uh, the 21st of October, and by that time we would have. Probably about half of his half of his two hundred and fifty half of his five hundred developers up and running on the platform, being able to collect metrics. And we do that on a on a board by board basis. So, so lots of the time is spent. Obviously, we need access to the tools. So uh, we work with uh, throughout the onboarding process with each of our individual customers to collect that information. Once we have that, we have what we need. We're able to perform um, the kind of the collection of that data. We then need to do some grouping and mapping of processes. So depending how different they are, we'll determine how long it's gonna take. Um, obviously, if they're all similar and everyone works in the same process, and that's gonna be, you know, we do one board, then we can roll out the others within days. But if, they're, if everyone's different, we'll need to do mapping on each individual one. Um, but, you know, you're, you're looking at weeks, really. I mean, it, it does, it's, it's, a, it's a solution which is intended to provide value as quickly as possible. Yeah, so so we um, we license we license essentially for for um, um, participants within the software delivery lifecycle. So whoever uses the tool that we collect data on, so Jira, Code Repos, um, CI/CD tools, anyone that uses those is is how we license. But we don't double count. So if one person uses two tools, that'll still just be one license. So. So that's how we determine the licenses. Now, the pricing model um, depends on the volume that you're buying. It's all tiered, but then of course after that, so we already provide a discount anyway, which we don't normally don't normally provide a discount. But then on top of that, we then have the the HG Capital agreed um, commercials, which then provide a further thirty five percent discount on whatever that quoted list price is. Um, that's how the licensing model works. Any specific um, um, pricing requests that you have, I'll be happy to, to talk about those um, if you follow up and with my contact details, which I'm sure Andrew and, and Jess will make available to you afterwards. Okay. Are there any, are there any, any more? Okay. Great. Well, thank you all for your time. Um, and this, this is a work in progress, but we'd really like to get your feedback. Was this useful? Um, we'll, we'll make the presentation available so that you've got a list of all of the different recommended uh, 
metrics for all the different areas. Um, it did involve quite a number of you who were on the call today um, who participated in, uh, in a workshop we had a few months ago giving your feedback. So thank you to all those of you who did that. Um, and uh, if, you, if you think that it's missing something or is overly complicated or, or anything really, if you would like to send me that feedback, that would be great and I'll try and incorporate it. But um, this is for your benefit at the end of the day and we want it to be useful to you. Um, to help you run your business better and provide insight. So um, hopefully you understand that's the context in which we've put all this together. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys.